Okay, so I've spoken about the regressive left and um, that is something that I believe is a noticeable problem. Um, the Wikipedia article has some interesting things to say about it. It says that um, one of the criticisms of the terminology is that it is used by the alt-right um, and also that some of the allegations are unquantified. I don't think that's quite true. Um, for instance, it suggests that people like Noam Chomsky have never proposed pro-Islamic views. Well, that might not be that might not be the case. But the thing is, it's a perception of double standards that is the issue. So the regressive left may not openly say we support Islamic terror. Of course, they're not going to say that. But it is the absence of critique that questions their position. That's the issue. Anyway, in the interest of fairness, I thought I should also talk about the regressive right. This is a term that isn't really used, but there are areas of um, the political right I can definitely find fault with and um, certainly issues. So I'm going to address some of them. Firstly, when it comes to the issue of police overreach or police brutality, this is a major debate point in the US in recent years, but it's also been the case in the UK and some other Western countries. I find that um, the reactionary right, if I could put it that way, very often when issues of police brutality are brought up, they immediately get into a sort of mode of, well, the person must have deserved it. Or, oh, if you don't resist arrest, you won't be shot, etc. And it's always without even looking at the whole case, they immediately defend the police officer. Now, it is true there are others who immediately attack the police officer without knowing the full story. I, I personally take the view it should be a case-to-case -case basis. And I also strongly believe that if a police officer oversteps his or her boundaries, they should be held to account. I don't think it's good enough just to be put on desk duty. I think if a police officer is accused of assault or killing someone, they should be arrested. They should get a fair hearing. All the details should be um, brought out into the open. And if they have been acting within their jurisdiction, then that will be revealed. But there should not be double standards. I don't think they should be put on desk duty when they've been accused of something serious. Um, and if they have nothing to hide, then uh, they will be found innocent. Um, or at least found to be acting within uh, the remit of their position. So I, I do feel there are some on the right who immediately defend the police without knowing the full story, and that can give the impression that they're turning a blind eye to police abuses. Look, as I say, it's a case-by-case -case situation. There are certainly situations where police have had to act in self-defence and it's been absolutely justified, but there have been other examples, the Eric Garner case is well documented, that are utterly unjustified, and people who make excuses for it should frankly know better. Um, so that's what I would call regressive right. I say right because it tends to come from the political right. Um, there's other areas regarding freedom of expression. Very often the political right accuse the left of, um, you know, trampling and free speech and so on. And that can certainly be seen. But there are certain right wing aspects um, that aren't exactly respectful of the First Amendment either. And I'm speaking particularly the US context here. Take, for example, the gun lobby. I have quite strong views on this. Um, the gun lobby shout about their Second Amendment rights, but they have actively, in some cases, insinuated that they would use violence against anyone who has a different point of view. And they distort and twist what people's positions are. A good example is when they say Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama is going to take away your guns. I have seen no evidence whatsoever that either of them have any plans to do s such a thing. And it does irritate me the way, well, more than irritate me, it really frustrates me the way the gun lobby um, scares people and says that if someone is proposing gun regulation, that equates to taking away guns. Um, I personally believe there should be regulation. I believe that's common sense. I think it is utterly reckless to allow people to go around with loaded weapons, carry them into coffee shops and so on. I think that's madness. And I don't see how it is unreasonable saying, look, we're not going to take away people's guns. We respect the Second Amendment. It has a long history 
in the United States, and people should absolutely have a right to have guns to protect their family for um, hunting, etc. But there should be some common sense regulation on a lethal weapon. And there's no comparison with cars. Uh, people say cars kill, but the point is cars are primarily a mode of transport. Guns are designed to kill. That's a fact. So, um, again, that's another area I would say that's regressive right. Because, actually, I believe most gun owners probably are rational, reasonable people. But, unfortunately, too many people get sucked into the NRA lies that if someone talks about gun regulation, they want to take away all the guns. Even if they wanted to, they couldn't. It would be practically impossible. So that irritates me, and uh, I think the NRA is a complete disgrace the way they scare people um, and basically outright lie about the situation. Um, and there's other areas as well. I believe the right sometimes downplays um, problems in society, for example, uh, racist attacks. Um, I believe sometimes they downplay that. I'm not talking about everyone, just like I said with the regressive left video. I'm certainly not talking about all right-wing people or conservative people. Um, I'm talking more about reactionary people that don't really look at the whole picture. And I think that's a problem. So, um, yeah, I, I think the regressive left is more of an issue at the moment. But all I would say is the regressive right, or the reactionary right, is not that much better I mean, a, lot, a good example is what's going on now with the Trump protests. Um, a lot of Trump supporters say, saying, oh, look at these intolerant liberals and so on. And certainly I can see where they're coming from in terms of the violent protests or the violent aspects of the protest. But to suggest that all Trump supporters are moderate and tolerant is a lot of nonsense. I've seen plenty of videos showing Trump supporters get into people's faces, assault people. Um, the fact of the matter is both the hard left and the hard right have unsavory elements, and it is a responsibility for moderate people on both sides to rein in on the extremes. And that is true of anything, it's true of any political movement. That's why I always say moderate feminists have a responsibility to acknowledge that there are man haters in their midst. There are feminists who basically just like to shit stir and blame all, all of their problems on men, and they won't take responsibility, and they constantly scapegoat men. So I believe when you join a particular movement, or an ideology, you associate with you, yourself with an ideology, you have responsibility to rein in on the extremists. That's what I try to do. Um, so yeah, let me know your thoughts. If you disagree with me, that's fine. But um, all I'm saying is people need to be open-minded and try and see, I'm not even saying see the other side. I'm saying just try and acknowledge that there are extremes. So for example, people who are very pro-gun, I'm not saying I'm I'm anti-gun. I understand there is a culture in America with that. All I'm saying is at least acknowledge that there are pro-gun extremists, because there are. There are people who literally stock up weapons because they're paranoid and they think that there's going to be some sort of takeover. That's paranoia. Um, you know, people threatening politicians because they happen to be pro-regulation, that is extremism. And I think, you know, that's... It's, there's no place for it, especially in a country that has a, polit a history of political assassinations. So, yeah, I'm just making this video to balance things out a bit in case you know, someone on the left might think of picking on the left. I see problems on the right as well, and those are some of them.